<laughs> Hello. Now they call me a lawyer of Lucifer for a reason, because I am hellacious at making arguments. Go figure. So today I will be making an argument about why I believe and why I can prove veterans issues are men's issues. This would also explain why so many MRAs happen to be veterans, because it just makes sense. It doesn't matter if you agree with MRAs or not, that is besides the point. So many veterans issues happen to be men's issues, and when you look at men's issues and veterans issues, you will notice a similarity that cannot be ignored. So with that said, let's go down the rabbit hole. Devil's Advocate is back on duty. Let's make a deal. So let me go ahead and make this clear. I'm going to be unfiltered. I'm going to say things that some people might find upsetting. However, I use a demon for an avatar. I use hellacious types of imagery and animations. Did you really expect me to be nice? If you did, I worry for you. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to leave links in the description for a lot of my claims. I'm going to say things that some people are not going to agree with, but I'm going to focus on things that I think that we all can mutually agree with. This is not a trigger warning. This is me being honest. So I'm going to let you know from the start if you cannot deal with someone like me, it would be a good idea to click away because I won't sugarcoat the truth to spare your feelings. With that said, let's begin. What you are seeing here is a 2001 PDF file in the form of a report from the NHCHC or National Healthcare for the Homeless Council. And it says right here that men make up 77% of all the homeless adults that are actually homeless and one third of those men are veterans. So not only are men the majority of the homeless, a third of those men are veterans. Fine, you think that those sources were just filled with information that came from straight white males? Well, how about the CDC? Last time I checked, the CDC wasn't exactly known to care about what your skin color is or what is between your legs. When they conducted research, they analyzed 130,554 homeless people and found that the rate of veterans being homeless and being in poverty was higher than the general population in a disproportionate sense the rate for homeless men that happen to be veterans was 13.6 of the entire veterans population whereas for women it was just 1.8 and that 1.8 is only accounting for the entire homeless population in the US meaning out of all the homeless people out there 1.8 of them happen to be women who are veterans whereas 13.6 of them over 10 percentage points higher happen to be men veterans in general when you consider the population of veterans versus people who are non-veterans were more subject to homelessness and poverty but the men especially for those of you who subscribe to identity politics homeless veterans should interest you and the reason being is because according to the national coalition for the homeless predominantly latino and african americans who happen to be veterans are also among the highest in likelihood to become homeless so for all of you who sit around and say well i know homelessness is a male issue but you subscribe to identity politics then I really have to question your standards as to what is a legit issue. And another thing that I found really, really interesting is that some people seem to think that homeless veterans are just these bunch of old men, when in fact, according to the National Coalition for the Homeless, 9% of them are between the ages of 18 and 30, and 41% are between the ages of 31 and 50, meaning it's not just these old men you seem to be thinking that are homeless veterans. So that means that from 2001 until relatively recently, we are seeing that the rate of homeless veterans out there hasn't really dropped much. In fact, some people would say that the problem has actually gotten worse. And we already know that the majority of homeless people in general are men. So this is why people say homelessness and the male issue in general of homelessness are related, are the same. Because if you know that we aren't doing anything about homeless men already who aren't even veterans, what do you think we're gonna do for homeless veterans when we know most of them are men? This needs to stop. We need to pay more attention towards homeless men and veterans in general if they are going to be the majority and i can already hear the people saying well a lot of homeless women happen to have children not the majority of them so that is not a sufficient excuse you cannot justify so many men being homeless so many veterans being homeless who happen to be men and then use some bullshit excuse to derail or justify it i'm pretty sure if you're one of those homeless men who fought a war to come back to be homeless and eat out of a fucking trash can someone making this 
excuses as to why you have to do that would be unacceptable. Now you may ask the question, why are so many of them homeless? Let's explore some issues. And issue number one is mental health. Let's get into this. According to the American Psychological Association, there are numerous issues that veterans face in terms of mental health that needs to be addressed and lessened. Here are a few of the issues. In fact, we'll go over many of the issues that you might notice are linked to men's health, especially men's mental health. Suicide rate increasing among the active duty Army National Guard and Reserve. If that is happening with the National Guard and the Reserve, what do you think is happening to the active Army? Suicide rates increasing for returning service members. Unemployment rate for veterans outpaces the civilian rate. Joblessness and downturn in economy may be adding to increase in suicides. Veterans are returning with serious mental issues, brain injuries linked to PTSD. Many in need don't seek help. Let's stop there. The many in need who don't seek help. Why is that? What are some of the reasons for that? I have some theories. First, let's start with the anecdotal. I had to wait three whole months, even after begging and pleading to get a psychological evaluation for my PTSD. And after three months of waiting, I finally get a phone call from my local VA hospital, which is Dorn VA Hospital in Columbia, South Carolina. Now to put that in context for you, South Carolina is a military town. We have not only Shaw Air Force Base, but also Fort Jackson, which is an army base. And we also have Paris Island, which is Marine Corps. Now in a military town, if I can't find help when I'm asking for the help, what do you think is happening in places that aren't so military minded? Another anecdotal story from my own roommate, who is a gay man who just needed a psychological evaluation. And also he had a cyst on his fucking heart that went unnoticed for a long time. This man survived an entire deployment with a cyst on his heart. And it took the VA more than a fucking year to get him the surgery that he needed to save his damn life. This is why some veterans don't seek the care of the VA because even if they seek that care, they often will not get it. Where is my proof in this? Do you remember in 2014, what was the big scandal in the country that was making television news all kinds of ratings? Oh yeah, that's right. The VA waiting list scandal where veterans were dying on waiting lists waiting for a fucking surgery, thus giving veterans a second opportunity to die for their fucking country. Yes, I am still salty over this because it pisses me off. As a side note, instead of us focusing on helping veterans who are on waiting lists waiting to fucking die in 2014 what was this country more concerned with this is ban bossy take one push stubborn stubborn pushy pushy stubborn stubborn bossy 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 when i was growing up i was called bossy i think the word bossy is just a swasher being labeled something matters by middle school girls are less interested in leadership than boys and that's because they worry about being called bossy we need to tell them it's okay to be ambitious we need to help them lean in words matter let's just ban the word bossy and encourage girls to lead to be strong and be ambitious listen to your own voice there are no limits there to be you you can change the world let's ban bossy be brave be you Ban Bossy. Join us to Ban Bossy. I'm not Bossy. Banning Bossy. You see, this is why a lot of MRAs happen to be veterans. Think of the message that sends to every male veteran out there. Because it was only male veterans who died on waiting lists. Not a single female veteran died on a waiting list. And if anyone has proof saying otherwise, please present it because I've never seen it. I find it hard to believe that the same country that can't stand a woman being called bossy would let a bunch of women die on waiting lists. Once again, that issue alone explains why some MRAs happen to be veterans. It just makes fucking sense. That is a blatant message sent to every male veteran out there that calling someone bossy deserves millions of fucking dollars. And if you are a male veteran who is dying on a waiting list, well, sorry, because the feelings of women matters more. And this also sent another message towards female veterans and women in general that some people are treating them like fucking children. It would have been nice to have the president of the United States of America get on television, do a commercial, a string of commercials, at that denouncing what the VA did instead of press conferences because his wife certainly wasted no time getting in commercials and denouncing Balsy in the same calendar fucking year. Yes, I am still salty over this and I do believe that I am salty for good reason.
The problems with homelessness and veterans, and especially male veterans, is that when you consider the general population of men in the United States of America, and when you consider veterans, the problem only gets worse when you consider post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, or substance use disorder, or SUD. These problems coupled together fosters an environment where veterans not only have a tough time finding jobs and finding a place to live, but it also affects mental health. Let me show you what I mean by that. One of the other reasons why veterans don't seek medical medical treatment is that oftentimes they will self-medicate and that self-medication can come in the form of harmful behaviors such as binge drinking or doing drugs or suffering from issues and behaviors normally associated with PTSD. According to the VA, more than two of 10 veterans with PTSD also have SUD. War veterans with PTSD and alcohol problems tend to be binge drinkers. Binges may be in response to bad memories of combat trauma. Almost one out of every three veterans seeking treatment for SUD SUD also has PTSD. The number of veterans who smoke is almost double for those with PTSD versus those without a PTSD diagnosis. In the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, about 1 in 10 returning soldiers seen in VA have a problem with alcohol or other drugs. Do you understand the implications of what they're saying here? Because of some of the numerous failings of the VA in terms of getting veterans treatment in a timely manner, and because some veterans simply do not know how to deal with combat trauma, bad memories, bad experiences, bad routines teens and bad habits, they are self-medicating. Does that sound familiar? Well, if you're used to men's issues, it should sound familiar. After all, according to the National Institutes of Health, men are more likely to develop drug habits than women are. Women find it harder to quit drugs once they start as compared to men. However, as it stands, men are the majority of people addicted to drugs. Now, I wonder how that would affect the veteran population when the veteran population is primarily male. If I have to explain this to you, then I worry for you. But you know what? Let's leave nothing to chance. If it's one thing that I've heard even feminists admit to is that we are not doing enough for men who have addiction issues. So let me ask you a question. Those same men who we were not helping before, if they become veterans, do you honestly think we'll start helping them then? Of course not. That's why veterans have so many in their ranks who are addicted to drugs and alcohol. And in my opinion, alcohol is really just a drug, but I am open to debating that. But once again, in addiction issues when it comes to males mirrors the addiction issues we see with veterans. And in both cases, the majority of the people who are addicted to these substances are male. Go figure. So for those of you who might be a little bit lost, let me explain what that translates to. That translates to a population of people who already have trouble finding work, who already have deep psychological issues on average, who already have issues with substance abuse, who already have issues with hypervigilance and PTSD. PTSD, who already have issues adjusting to society based solely on their combat experiences or even experiences outside of combat, being expected to find a job and maintain that job with all the issues that I just named. In what instance would that be reasonable to expect of someone given everything that I just said? This is why the VA has something called individual unemployability because the VA knows that a lot of veterans are going to be unemployable due to physical injury and or mental injury. They would not have this if everything Thing that I just said were not true. But when it comes to substance abuse, there is a darker turn here. And it is one that pisses me off tremendously. If you were to go to any post and you were to ask any basic trainee soldier, they would tell you about the US military's dark secret when it comes to overprescribing painkillers. Oftentimes, if you go to a military hospital and you complain about pain or any issue for that matter, you are given a nasty cocktail of painkillers that are often too powerful for the human body to withstand. I can tell you this from personal experience, but then again, you can ask any veteran and they will give you the exact same story. You are given some crazy painkillers and then you are told to drink water and drive on, which is common jargon within the army. Well, for the longest time, the VA has been accused of over prescribing drugs. For example, according to US Medicine, which is a resource that follows medicine on a federal level, the VA has been called out for over prescribing really powerful painkillers that often gets veterans addicted to them and can cause serious health problems that could include death. But then it would appear that some VA employees are helping these veterans kill themselves even if the doctors at the VA are not prescribing pills that would have gotten the job done anyways. Let me show you what I mean by that. There is actually a case under investigation at the Lowell Outpatient VA Clinic in Boston, Massachusetts. Some of the claims being made there is that VA employees provided dangerous drugs including 
using heroin to two veterans who died in that clinic. One veteran died in a clinic associated with Lowell. Now, if you are under the assumption this is an isolated case, you are sadly mistaken. There is one case in particular I want you guys to pay attention to because it explains why one of the claims made about a veteran that I just spoke of shouldn't seem all that far-fetched. Let's take a look. Matthew Holmes and Edward Kalisiak were both roommates and friends who served in combat together. Matthew Holmes overdosed on drugs and he died. But Edward Kalisiak, he overdosed on a very particular drug. Do you know what that drug was? That drug was fentanyl and that name rings a bell with me because some VA employees will take drugs like this and sell it to veterans who are addicted. Where is my proof in this? Let's go to the VA's own website. On the VA's website, we see a case where a nurse has pleaded guilty to charges of getting controlled substances by misrepresentation, fraud, or deception. Now the case says that this woman was taking the medication for personal use. I seriously doubt that because she took a plea deal, which tells me she's not stupid. She understands that the amount of years that you will do in prison for selling these medications would greatly outnumber the years you would do in prison for simply being an addict. So she played her cards well. But if you look here, it even says that one of the medications that she took was fentanyl. Why is that? Because fentanyl, unlike Oxycontin and other big name drugs that a lot of addicts happen to like, fentanyl is not going to be as closely guarded. And so you will get VA employees who will take this medication and sell it to addicts, which only makes perfect sense because you understand that veterans typically do more drugs than the general population. And this nurse would know that because she works at a fucking VA clinic. How could she not have known that? If she were a janitor or someone who works at the cafeteria, that would be different. But she is a nurse, so she would have access to all of those stats about veterans and drug abuse. So my guess is she sold the medication to veterans who happen to be addicts because you have a steady supply of your product and you also have a steady supply of demanders for that product. Now you may be saying, devil, that is not direct evidence of someone selling drugs to VA patients. Well, I'm glad that you thought that. Let's continue to use the VA's own website to show you that I am not kidding. And some of these drugs are not things you can find inside of a pill bottle. Now this particular case that happened in New York rings a bell with me because I do recall reading about it while waiting for an appointment to go see my doctor at the VA. So the story goes that these VA employees were selling cocaine out of a VA facility. And like I just said, these people know that veterans tend to hang out around VA facilities. And so if you know that, why would you not sell your drugs to veterans who are already more likely to do drugs than the general civilian population? It just makes sense. Once again, you have your supply, which doesn't have to be prescription drugs, and you have a demographic of demanders who are more likely than the general civilian population to actually be addicts. Seven people were arrested in New Jersey who had access to a VA medical center there who were selling heroin, crack, and hydromorphone to veterans. Because once again, when you know that the veteran population in the US is more susceptible to becoming addicts, it just makes sense to sell them drugs if you want to make a quick buck. Well, unfortunately for them, they were all arrested and all found guilty. Or how about this nurse in New York who decided to take oxycodone and try to sell it to veterans? Now she is facing a maximum of 20 years in prison and a $1 million fine, which based on the results of the case, I hope she gets the maximum punishment because once again, she is a nurse at the VA, so she knows the stats. She knows these people are more susceptible to becoming addicts. So she took advantage of these veterans and I hope she faces the maximum penalty for it. And I hope she rocks in prison. So let me ask you a question. If the VA own website is showing you that there is a plethora of issues concerning VA employees who decide to sell medication and street drugs to veterans. And if most of those veterans are in fact men who are once again more likely to become addicts versus women, would you not call that a male issue? And if an MRA or men's rights activist say they are for men's issues, could you understand why an MRA might be concerned with this? Well, in some cases, men's issues don't matter unless Unless we are saying think of the women's and let me show you some simple proof in that this comes from the VA's page on cholesterol issues and managing cholesterol they have a special section just for women veterans and you might be asking why well the reason for this is that the VA has been accused of not caring about women veterans who have high cholesterol now to those of you who know something about health statistics you understand why this is bullshit let me show you what I mean by that now this comes from everyday 
day health. Men, in fact, on average, as compared to women, have high cholesterol issues. Women who are older tend to develop high cholesterol issues and tend to have serious complications because of those issues. But before the age of 55, on average, the estrogen in women's bodies tends to protect them from high cholesterol issues, and that is a luxury that men don't have. So then the question becomes, what is the average age of female veterans that would justify us, and by us I mean the United States of America, increasing funding for cholesterol issues with women? Because if the age is not after the age of 55, and if men are more likely at most other ages before the age of 55 on average to develop high cholesterol issues, then it would make perfect sense as to why the VA invests more money into men's health in terms of high cholesterol issues. Now this comes from a 2009 report on the female veteran population and some of the issues they may face. And some of these issues I want to discuss in later videos. But for now, allow me to draw your attention to what the VA is saying about the veterans population in terms of women. They are saying that in the calendar year of 2009, only 8% of veterans were women. Now there is a margin of error there. I would say that the current population of female veterans is around 10%, but even then, that's not even a quarter. And I would also like to draw your attention to the fact that the VA is saying here, the average age of female veterans is around 48 years old. Now that seems a little bit odd because the only way you can justify more money being spent on high cholesterol issues for female veterans is that they would have to be beyond the age of 55. At least that's what Everyday Health said. And let me put this into a greater perspective for you. We know that men are going to face high cholesterol issues a lot earlier than women will on average. And we know the vast majority of patients within the VA system are in fact male. If the average age of female veterans is 48 years old, that's a full seven years and some change before they would face high cholesterol issues on average as compared to men. So please tell me how the fuck is that not a little bit gynocentric? How the fuck is that not derailing a conversation about men's health issues for the sake of the what about the women's argument when women are not even the majority of people who are affected by high cholesterol issues even when you compare age groups on the average before the age of 55 and when you consider that the vast majority of people who will develop high cholesterol issues throughout their lifetime are in fact men then you have to conclude that if you have a healthcare system that mostly caters towards men that you would need to give more towards the issue that is going to affect more male veterans on average as compared to female veterans. I just showed you where the average age of female veterans is 48 years old and we know that the average age of male veterans is much higher with the big difference being that male veterans don't have to wait until after the age of 55 to develop high cholesterol issues. This is why the VA invests more money and time into high cholesterol issues as it concerns male veterans versus female veterans because I could have made the argument that since the vast majority of patients within the VA system are males then anyone arguing against that has no fucking argument. So when we go to Google and we type in male veteran issues, let's see what pops up. Oh, look here. There are a bunch of issues that are being mentioned that have nothing to do with male veterans. For example, five top issues women veterans face when returning home. Female veterans, what are the biggest obstacles they face? The mistreatment of female veterans is not just a women's issue. All right, so let's go to page two. There is a single link here on page two that mentions veterans affairs benefits for sexually assaulted male veterans. Finally, something about male veterans. And that single link was on the first page, but that's only one link so far discussing male veteran issues outside of all these links that we keep seeing about female veterans. Let's go down. Congress's four female combat veterans are speaking up on military issues. Samantha B. Female veteran healthcare is comically bad. Eliminating the gaps. Examining women veterans issues. That's all for page two. Let's move on to page three. Now on to page three, addressing fertility and self-health issues for veterans. That's for both male and female veterans, but at least they're talking about male veterans to some extent. Problems in families of male Vietnam veterans with PTSD. Finally, someone else discussing a male issue when it comes to male veterans. Ah, but the LA Times. 
Suicide rate of female military veterans is called staggering. At least below that, Green Doors actually mentions that the vast majority of homeless veterans are males. But then right below that, women veterans, the long journey home. Tanya Butler, making leaks and bounds to bring women veteran issues to the forefront. And they're mentioning about the unique challenges of women veterans because you can't have a discussion about veterans without making women the central issue. Right below that, California's women veterans and mental health go down a little lower women veterans third page so far and most of the gender results that we have are for women let's go to page four now here comes page four the new york times says the va's woman problem the va's woman problem new york times new york times in 2014 not a single female veteran died on waiting lists and you have the nerve to say the va has a woman problem really Below that, usmedicine.com actually discusses chronic diseases among male veterans. Below that, the CDC also discusses chronic diseases in male veterans. But then right below that, female veterans face woefully inadequate care. Yeah, that should totally pop up in a search about male veterans. Below that, examining the needs of female versus male veterans. And below that, you see the same link to the PDF file that keeps popping up about families of male veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. And now here's page five. As you can see, no kind of links about male veterans, despite me having some pretty direct search terms. Let's go down here. Women say they don't feel respected and valued as veterans. From the Huffington Post, female veterans have higher risk for mental health, substance abuse. From Lucida Treatment, Women veterans risk factors for homelessness. Even though male veterans make up the majority of the homeless amongst the veteran population, they are still more concerned with women. Now that was the first five pages. I'm pretty sure if I went on, it would either be mostly about women or gender neutral things, despite the fact that I had direct search terms. If an MRA is looking at this, could you not agree that maybe, just maybe, this is a bit gynocentric? Would you? Because I would. So what happens when you Google female veteran issues, you know almost the exact same search terms for male veterans with the exception that you are replacing male with female? What would happen? Jeez, let's find out. So let's go ahead and find out what happens when we type in female veteran issues. Ah, oh, there we go. Almost every link we see here is about female veterans, and yet when I put in male veterans, you get almost no links about male veterans. Let's go to the second page here. Oh wow, more issues about female veterans. Once again, third page. Once again, more issues about female veterans. Almost no mention of males. Fourth page. Once again, for the fourth page. Fifth page. So wow, I did the exact same thing for male veterans. You got almost no links about male veteran issues, but then you go to female veterans with almost the exact same search terms with the exception being, I put female instead of male and look at the results. If any men's rights activist was looking at this or even myself who doesn't identify as an MRA, I think both me and that MRA could agree that is a wee bit gynocentric. And maybe this has a lot to do with male veterans not getting the help that they need because no one wants to talk about their issues. Is always think of the women's. And as a male veteran, I am absolutely sick of this shit. Just being honest. In close Closing, I think we need to discuss male veteran issues a little bit more often and not be so gynocentric when it comes to female veterans issues. I am not saying that female veterans don't have issues or concerns, but if you know that the male veterans are the majority of the homeless, are the majority that are committing suicide, if you know they are the ones who are most likely to be drug addicts and alcoholics, they are the ones who are most likely going to utilize VA healthcare because the majority of combat relationships injuries and injuries in general in military service are almost always male injuries because through a process of math that is almost a certainty then can we please pretty please discuss male issues without the fucking derailing can we finally discuss male issues without someone saying but what about the women's once again i understand women have their issues in military service and i understand women have issues outside of military service i get that i'm going to make a whole separate video about it however if we know that the majority of issues that veterans face are almost always mostly faced by male veterans then can these people People who constantly say think of the women's, who refuse to discuss male issues, who constantly derail the conversation when it comes to discussion about male issues, could you please shut the fuck up? 
just for once. Because honestly, these are not the only issues that I could have brought up. This will be an ongoing series, probably the longest series that I've ever engaged in. If you understand that people like me are citing their sources, are bringing to you experience after experience, then sit back and shut the fuck up and don't derail because that shit has gotten old. If you are a veteran or if you know a veteran who is thinking about hurting themselves, I would like for you to utilize this phone number or pass it along to a veteran who might need it. This is a veteran's crisis line. Please, if you are a veteran who is thinking about hurting themselves or anyone else for that matter, before you do that, please call this number. These people will do their best to help you and if they don't help you contact me i left my social media contact details in the description and no it's not to a devil's advocate page it's to my personal facebook page before you hurt yourself or anyone else please contact me give me a chance to help give me a chance to not see anyone be hurt or for me to lose another battle buddy that's all i ask just give me the opportunity to help please if you are a homeless veteran or if you know of a homeless veteran please pass this number along or use it yourself. This number is a VA's response number to homeless veterans. There are some resources out there that can help, but you have to give them the opportunity to help you or the veteran in question. So please contact them. If you have trouble getting in touch with the Homeless Veteran Assistance Service, contact me on my personal social media page on Facebook and I will do what I can to help. I don't want to see another battle buddy be homeless. And once again, if you felt like I was antagonizing, if you felt like I was angry, well, congratulations, because I was. I don't want to give out too much personal information about myself that is unnecessary, but I might have experienced some of these issues a little more than I'm letting on. But what do I know? I'm just the devil in the details. <laughs>